Okay, so today I will be talking about how to graph quadratic equations, and I'm going to do one example for each of the three cases where we have the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c, and its vertex form a times x minus h squared plus k, and also its factor form where you have min x minus q times x minus p where p and q are the solutions so we're going to go ahead and look at the solutions and as well as graphing it in general and we may get the solutions just from graphing since some do have whole solutions but if we have a factor form and we just graph it we're always going to have a solution because it's already given to us so Let's go ahead and look at the general case first, where we're going to have x squared plus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Sometimes this is going to be written as f of x is equal to 0. But most of the time when you're graphing it, you also want to see what the solutions are. So that's why sometimes it's better to write as equal to zero since you're going to be solving it in some sense. And we're going to go ahead and graph it by making a Cartesian graph. And we're going to make a table on the left side. And we're just going to label x and y as the uh, respective values that are going to be plugged into our equation which will give us an output so we're going to start off with negative 2 negative 1 0 1 and 2 so let's go ahead and just see what we are given so when x is equal to 0 we are obviously going to get negative 3 because 0 squared plus 2 times 0, all this makes 0, which just leaves negative 3. So we're going to have a y value of negative 3. So when x is equal to 0, we have negative 3. And when x is equal to negative 1, we're going to get negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3, which is going to give us 1, minus 2, minus 3, which is going to be negative 4. And when x is equal to negative 2, we're going to get positive 4, minus 4, minus 3, which is going to give us a value of negative 3. So that tells us that negative one is going to be our vertex because we have two of the same y values in the middle and here we have four in the middle so we have three and three which are just one unit away in the x-axis so we're going to have negative one here negative two here and the x or the y value is going to be negative four and we're going to have a point here when x is equal to zero we're going to have negative three and when x is equal to negative three it's going to be at negative two comma three and it's telling us that our lowest point or our vertex is exactly at negative one comma negative four so we're going to continue plotting a few points which are one and two so we're going to look at x is equal to 1, where we're going to get 1 plus 2 minus 3, which is going to tell us that when x is equal to 1, we're going to get y is equal to 1, or not 1, 0, which is a solution to our quadratic. So we're going to have 0 here. And now we're going to look at positive 2, which is positive 4, 
plus 4 minus 3, which is the same thing as 5. So we can go ahead and approximately get a good rough sketch given our points now. So we're going to have 5v up here. And that is a y value for x is equal to 2. So we're going to start from the top and connect our points going downward. So the parabola should look something like this as a rough sketch. But since we know that negative 1 is a vertex, we're going to be able to have a good looking graph that looks like this. Which is how its original shape should look like. But since we have a huge graph here and we're trying to test the points, then we have a rough sketch. So we're going to go ahead and look at vertex form now. That's where we looked at the general case in the quadratic by looking at the standard form and then graphing it. So we're going to look at vertex form where we have 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 2 is equal to 0. So we're going to go ahead and make the table again on the left. And we're also going to make a graph on the right. So let's go ahead and have x and y again. We're going to have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we have 1, 2, negative 2, and negative 1, and 0. So we'll just plug in 0 first. So we have 2 times negative 1 squared minus 2. That tells us that we have 2 minus 2, which is equal to 0. So giving us that 0 is one of our solutions. So we're going to have 0 there. And we're going to write z 0 comma 0 and we're also going to go ahead and look at 1 which is going to be x or 1 minus 1 which is equal to 0 and 2 times 0 is going to be of course 0 so we're going to be left with negative 2 so when x is equal to positive 1 we're going to be left with negative 2 and when x is equal to positive 2, we're going to have 2 times 1 squared minus 2, which is going to give us, again, another solution of 0. So we have our second point, which is here, and our first point is at negative 2. So there's our two solutions. And we're also going to look at negative 1. We're going to have 2 times negative 2 squared minus 2, which is the same thing as 2 times 4 minus 2. And 8 minus 2 is equal to positive 6. And for negative 2, we're just going to have 2 times negative 3 squared minus 2, where we're going to get 2 times 9 minus 2. And we're going to have 18 minus 2, which is going to give us positive 16. So we can go ahead and plot our points roughly. We're not going to use positive 16 for negative 2. We're just going to start from here and look at how it's going to approximately look like. It should cross the x-axis at positive 2, but I didn't really get a great sketch. So let me just go ahead and move that point a little bit to the left. So 
So our positive two should be right here. So that's how it should look like. Giving us our two solutions that x is equal to zero and positive two. And it has a vertex at one comma negative two since we are given it already here just set this value what's the parentheses equal to zero giving us x is equal to one which is going to be our x coordinate for our vertex and our k value which is this is basically going to be our y value for our vertex so that's that since we could already find the vertex just from looking at our equation, where it's going to be x minus 1, which is equal to 0, where we're going to get x is equal to positive 1. And there's going to be shifted down two units to the, to the bottom, which is negative 2. So that's that for the vertex. And we're going to go ahead and look at its factored form. And that'll be that for today. So we have x minus 2 times x plus 1. And we're going to just make a table again. And a graph as well. So let's go ahead and plot negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So when we have, let's just plug in the factors first. So we have x minus 2 is equal to 0. x plus 1 is equal to 0. Let's solve for x where we get x is equal to positive 2 and x is equal to negative 1. So we know that when x is equal to positive 2, we're going to get 0. And when x is equal to negative 1, we're going to get 0. So we can automatically get 2 points just from the factored form. We're going to have negative 1 and negative 2. 1 and 2. So when x is equal to 2, y is going to be equal to 0. And the same thing could be said for negative 1. So we have those 2 points now. And now we can go ahead and find the vertex using two solutions, which are negative one and positive two. And we're going to get negative one plus two over two, which is the same thing as one half. So that means that our vertex is going to be at one half. So we'll see how that looks like later. So let's go ahead and plot zero now. So we get negative two times positive one is going to give us a y value of negative 2 when x is equal to 0. And if we go ahead and look at positive 1, we're going to get the same thing since we have 1 minus 2, which is negative 1, and 1 plus 1, which is 2. So we're going to get the same value. So we have negative 2 again. So now we see that we're going to have a y value somewhere down here. So let's go ahead and see what it's going to be. And let's test negative 2 before we go ahead and find the y value for the vertex. We have negative 4 times negative 1, which is going to give us positive 4. So. We have positive 4 here. I think we just recolor them so we know that they are the points for the parabola. And now we're going to look for the y value of the vertex. And then I'm going to have. 1 half minus 2, which is the same thing as negative 3 over 2. And 1 half plus 1 is equal to 
3 over 2, which is going to give us 9 over 4, which is somewhere around here. So we're going to have a parabola that looks something like this. No, that was horrible. Excuse me for that. That should be the rough sketch of our parabola. So we have our graph now and we were able to get our vertex given our two x solutions so that's going to be it for this video and thank you for watching and i hope you have a good day